Not me. I could never. If sipping pina coladas on a beach in Cabo all day while making hundreds of dollars seems like a distant fairy tale, it actually can be done with dividend investing. The average nine to five employee can realistically and practically become financially free and retire early with dividend investing. It's a reliable and consistent way to get passive income monthly. As you choose to invest in solid dividend companies, you are creating generational wealth brick by brick. Every dollar invested into dividend stocks creates a snowball effect until you can actually retire early and go on that beach in Cabo because you know what? You deserve it. Hey, future millionaires. In today's video, we are going to create a dividend portfolio step by step so you can retire early. This can even be done with low income. Seeing your monthly income increase on a regular basis becomes huge motivation to strive for your goals. While it takes the average employee 30 to 40 years to retire, you could retire in 10 years with dividend investing. You need stable, consistent companies that pay you with a nice, high, juicy, passive income check. In this video, we will discuss why you need to invest in dividends, key components and what to look for in the best dividends, the exact recipe you need to build a solid dividend portfolio, risk factors, and be sure to stay until the end of this video to see how I personally supercharge my portfolio to make 10% more money. Dividend investing is a true form of passive income. You can live life how you please and get cash flow on a consistent basis. With everything that's happening in the economy, it's vital to choose the best and most reliable companies that truly value shareholders to hand your hard-earned cash to. Warren Buffett, the legendary investor, is on track to make over $600 million in dividends alone. And he said this, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Make money work for you so you can live the life you please. Since the 1930s, dividends have accounted for 40% of total returns of the S&P 500. Needless to say, dividends are very important to anyone looking for passive income. As a brief overview, dividend stocks are companies that pay investors a certain amount of cash on a monthly or quarterly basis. Now let's say I own one share or slice of the company Apple. I will receive 23 cents every three months in passive income just for owning one share. Now this money doesn't come from Jay Powell's printer. It comes from Apple's excess revenue and they want to reward shareholders. Dividend stocks are normally large, consistent, well-known companies called blue chip stocks. These include Coca-Cola, Walmart, Walgreens and Johnson & Johnson. Now, some have increased and paid dividends for 25 or more years, known as dividend aristocrats, and some have paid 50 consecutive years of dividends and increased them, known as dividend kings. There are also dividend ETFs or exchange-traded funds that own several companies that pay dividends. If you don't know much about which dividend stocks to own, low-cost dividend ETFs may be a great option. We will discuss the best dividend ETFs to own in the portfolio section. To find the dividend yield or how much money the company will pay shareholders each year, simply go to yahoofinance.com. Some companies like REITs or real estate investment trusts, which are housing stocks, will pay a very high amount of money to shareholders. This yearly amount or percentage is known as the dividend yield. Normally, the higher the yield, the higher the risk. So we're looking for companies that have a stable and strong 2 to 4% dividend yield. When comparing dividend stocks, we're trying to look at how well the company is doing and not necessarily how high the yield is. The main reason to invest in dividends is the power of compound interest. The more you invest, the more your money will skyrocket. If you put your dividends back into the same company or DRIP, which is simply dividend reinvesting, you will make huge returns. For example, if we put $1,000 into Johnson & Johnson over a 30-year period and just hold it, we will more than double our money. That doesn't even include how much Johnson & Johnson, the actual company, will go up in stock price. As a dividend investor, our primary focus is to find steady and consistent companies that pay us well. In order to retire early, we want to look at a few important key metrics before we put our money to work. 
First, the company must be growing revenue for the past five to 10 years and have nice profitability. Looking at the company target, we can see great growth. In 2010, Target's revenue was $65 million and in 2021, it climbed to $93 million. This consistent growth is exactly what I love to see as a dividend investor. Free cash flow and net income also must be grown steadily. Next, we look for a high sustainable payout ratio. The payout ratio is how much money the company gives compared to its total net income. With Target, we can see a 29.6% payout ratio, which is sustainable. A good payout ratio is between 0 to 35%. Now, if a company is above that, they may have a little bit of a struggle finding the free cash flow to pay its shareholders. Note, REITs have a higher payout ratio because they are obligated under law to pay at least 90% of their income to shareholders. Next, we see how long the company has paid and increased dividends. As Target is a dividend king, it has paid and increased dividends for 50 consecutive years. In 2013, if you had one share of Target, you would receive 43 cents. On May 17th, 2022, the dividend was 90 cents. As a dividend investor, we want to see a steady increase in our dividend so we can get more money every year year. We also don't want to see a dividend cut from the previous year, so we don't get any surprises in income. Next, we want to look for a higher yield. The higher the yield, the more money we make, and therefore we can retire faster. The S&P 500 currently has a yield of 1.37%. As a dividend investor, we want that to be even higher, so we want 2 to 4%. Last, we look at debt to EBITDA to make sure the company is not drowning in debt. This number should be less than 3 to ensure the company can pay off its debt. With these metrics in mind, we will have a better understanding of which companies we want to add to our investing portfolio so we can retire early. Now for the fun part. Let's create a sustainable, balanced, and growing dividend portfolio that withstands any threat of recession. According to Merrill Lynch, we need 80 to 90% of our annual pre-retirement income to retire comfortably. The total average retirement per year is $47,357. Depending on where you want to live and how extravagantly, this may vary. Let's have a $50,000 per year in dividend income goal for early retirement. Since we want to retire early, we will have a 10-year time horizon. You may adjust this depending on your income. Also, depending on your risk tolerance, you may want higher yields. Just be careful not to fall for unsustainable dividend yield traps. These pesky companies usually have poor management, low revenue, and a dangerous high payout ratio. First, we add 30% into safe dividend ETFs. This would include Vanguard's, ticker symbol VYM, or Schwab's SCHD. I have a link in the description below of the top four dividend ETFs, which include SCHD and VYM, so you can understand exactly why I love these ETFs. Both VYM and SCHD have a very long track record of stock price and dividend growth. Both own very well-known stable companies like Coca-Cola, Verizon, Home Depot, Johnson & Johnson, Bank of America, and AbbVie. VYM has a 2.72% dividend yield, and SCHD has a 3.44% dividend yield. The slice of the pie should consist of stable companies, good capital appreciation, and a nice dividend yield. Second, we would add 30% into monthly dividend income ETFs. These are higher yielding ETFs that pay dividends on a monthly basis. With these ETFs, we need to be careful about capital depreciation. Ideally, we would like a rising stock price with a high dividend yield. This will help fight inflation. I prefer ticker symbol JEPI and DEVO as they have a good track record of increasing stock price and their expense ratio, while high, is healthy compared to the dividend. Expense ratio is the fee charged to own an ETF or mutual fund because they are actively managed funds, and this covers management and administrative costs. Be careful of high expense ratios as they will eat away at returns. Third, we would add 25% to dividend aristocrats or dividend kings in different sectors of the market with high yields. Sectors include energy, materials, industrials, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, healthcare, financials, information technology, communication services, and utilities. Top dividend kings would be ticker symbol MO with a 6.7% dividend yield, Legend and Platt with a 4.5% yield, 3M with a 4.1% dividend yield, AbbVie with a 3.8% yield. 
Top dividend aristocrats would include Walgreens with a 4.4% yield, T. Rowe with a 3.82% yield, and Ben with a 4.64% yield. Fourth, we would add 10% into the housing sector. We will mostly look at REITs or real estate investment trusts. A REIT is in the housing sector and is a company that owns and most often operates income-producing real estate. REITs own many types of commercial real estate, including offices, apartments, warehouses, hospitals, shopping centers, hotels, finance, and forests. If you don't want to worry about researching individual REITs, VNQ, the Vanguard REIT ETF, with a 3.15% yield is a good option. For individual REITs, good options include Realty Income with a 4.1% yield, Vici with a 5% yield, EPR with a 6.2% yield, and Stag with a 4.74% yield. Other types of housing stocks include BD Seeds and M REITs, which tend to be a bit more complicated and riskier. If you would like a solid BDC or business development company, ticker symbol Main is a great option with a 6.62% yield. BDCs invest in small and medium-sized companies and distressed companies. While they help with initial stages of growth and help companies gain financial health, these companies are a bit riskier to finance than sound companies. For MREITs, ABR is a solid choice to buy and hold with a 7.7% dividend yield. It has one of the lowest payout ratios in the industry and has hiked dividends 18% over the past five years. MREITs or mortgage REITs are companies that are structured as REITs, but they own interest-bearing assets like mortgages and mortgage-backed securities, not physical real estate. They are considered risky because as interest rates increase, MREIT earnings usually decrease due to the borrowing costs. While M rates generally have higher yields, they tend to cut dividends when times are tough. Last, we add 5% into high yield dividend stocks in which we have high conviction. These include stocks that are consistently growing revenue and dividends and have a high yield. The stock price is not as important and may be flat. Be careful of stocks that show a decrease in stock price over the last 10 years. High yield stocks include ticker symbol EPD with a 7.98% yield, Sunoco with a 9.23% yield, ARCC with a 9.15% yield, OHI with a 9.48% yield, and OCSL with a 10% yield. These stocks are risky but offer attractive yields. So at this point you're probably thinking, Raylan, this is way too good to be true. There's got to be a catch. While I would love to tell you that there are no strings attached, there are a few risk factors that you need to be aware of. First, your returns are limited. Most dividend stocks are well-established companies that produce consistent yet slow growth in revenue. You most likely will see slow rising stock prices each year. So returns on the stock price may be smaller compared to growth stocks. Second, since dividends are not guaranteed, companies can cut their dividend at any moment. Take for example AT&T. They cut their dividend in half last year. The stock plummeted. This is why we need to look for dividend aristocrats, dividend kings, and sustainable payout ratios because those companies will most likely continue to increase and pay a dividend. Last, dividends may be taxed inefficiently. It's important to see what type of tax you may be charged from dividends before investing. Taxes can be in the form of qualified or non-qualified dividends. Your income also determines whether you will pay taxes or not on your dividends. With these factors in mind, we can still create a consistent and steady dividend portfolio for you to retire. Now let's say that 10 years is way too long to wait for you to retire. So let's bring that up to seven to eight years. These are three things that I personally do to supercharge my dividend portfolio and make me 10% more per year. First, I use a tax deferred account like an IRA or a 401k to supercharge my returns. Taxes will only be paid on withdrawals. Tax deferred accounts are especially great because they allow the dividend growth investor to essentially double their compound when reinvesting dividends. Buying stocks that continually raise dividends and reinvesting those dividends without being taxed gives a dividend investor huge returns. Second, I use a very low risk strategy called selling covered calls to add to my dividends. Once I have 100 shares of Jeppy, I look at my average share price and choose a higher price I don't think it will get to in the time frame I'm using to essentially rent out those shares. I will leave a link in the description below on how to sell cover calls, but essentially it's a way for you to get paid rent 
or what's known as premium, for simply owning your shares. For Jappy, I don't think it will get to $59 by January 20th, 2023, so I will sell a cover call, and once it is executed, I will get $55 in pure profit. Selling cover calls is one of my absolute favorite strategies to use to increase income in my portfolio, but it does come with a few risks, so please leave a comment below to let me know if you would like me to make a full video on selling covered calls. Last, I create a higher yield yet higher risk dividend portfolio. Instead of allocating 30% to safe dividend ETFs, I allocate 15% to safe dividend ETFs and 15% to high yield monthly income ETFs. I especially love XYLD right now. It offers over a 10% dividend yield and tracks the S&P 500. Just note the stock price may be flat or increase only by a little. Now that you have all of the tools you need to create a dividend portfolio for you to retire early and live comfortably, please let me know in the comments below what you think about a dividend portfolio. Do you have any dividend stocks? What do you think about those dividend stocks? What are your favorite dividends? Let me know in the comments below. And this is Supergirl Investor here to save the world and make you wealthy. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and please share this with your investor friends so it can get out into the universe that this is a great way to create a dividend portfolio and for you not to be stuck in a nine to five for the rest of your life. And if you would like to see my high yield dividend portfolio, I will leave a link in the description below. I have an update. It was my largest monthly income that I got from dividends, so I was very excited. Um, just note that this is my high yield dividend portfolio and it's about 10% of my overall portfolio. I have another one that is a dividend portfolio and then I have index funds. So just so you're aware of that. But please let me know in the comments what you think about dividend investing and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.